All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. This is the results presentation for the overall study developing an affordable GTR asphalt mixtures for local roadways. Um, Vicki Fout from ODOT's Office of Statewide Planning and Research. The researcher, Manir Narzal from Ohio University, is here to give you this presentation. The project is wrapping up, and the final report is going to be available online on the overall website in the upcoming few months. We're also recording this session right now, so um, if you want to go back and share the link with your friends or colleagues once it's posted, you can do that. For those of you who are listening online, please mute your telephones. Uh, if you need to leave your office or take a call, please do not put this line on hold. Uh, if you do, your lovely hold music will play over top of our recording. Uh, so phones muted. There is a chat pod that you will see online off to the lower right-hand side. You can type your questions there and we will answer them. Uh, folks in the room, please hold your questions to the end. At the end of the presentation, uh, Dr. Nizal will be more than happy to answer any and all questions that you have. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Munir Nazal. I'm uh, associate professor at uh, the Civil Engineering Department at Ohio University. Uh, today, I will uh, be presenting the results uh, for a study uh, on developing uh, affordable uh, GTR mixes for local roadways. Uh, before I uh, proceed, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, the co principal investigators in this uh, project. Uh, Dr. Sang Su Kim from Ohio University and Dr. Ala Abbas from University of Akron. Um, this uh, project was uh, funded uh, by Ohio Research Initiative uh, for Locals, uh, ORL, uh, ODET, and the Federal Highway Administration. So I would like to thank uh, all of them for sponsoring the study. Uh, I would like to also uh, thank all the technical uh, advisory committee, and uh, uh, we have uh, them listed here. Uh, all of them have contributed to the study, and uh, I think without them, uh, we could not really accomplish what we have done. Uh, also, I would like to uh, thank the city of Columbus. Um, uh, they were very helpful um, and cooperative, uh, especially uh, when we constructed the test section as part of the study. And uh, I would like also to uh, thank Vicky. Uh, she was uh, very patient with us, and she put a lot of effort and time uh, to help us uh, make sure that the study is completed and to have those test sections constructed. So thank you, Vicky, for uh, that. Uh, so I will start with a little bit of a background. Um, so what is GTR uh, to start with? Uh, GTR is basically a material that uh, is uh, produced by uh, grinding uh, scrap tires, just like what you see here. Basically, after grinding the scrap tires, uh, you will have a material uh, that is uh, looking like a powder, uh, and basically this is the uh, GTR. Uh, GTR have been used, I would say, for over two decades um, uh, for as in, in asphalt mixes. Uh, there are different ways of doing that. Uh, the, the, the one that I would say has been uh, recently uh, uh, received a lot of interest is the wet process. And what I mean by the wet process is basically adding the GTR to the asphalt binder itself, uh, mixing it. Typically, this is done at the asphalt terminal. And then basically shipping it to the asphalt plant. And once uh, it is being shipped to the asphalt plant, it will become just like any uh, modified binder polymer binder or a, any type of modified binder. And then basically you mix it uh, with the aggregates uh, to get uh, your asphalt mixture or the GTR uh, asphalt mixture that you have. Uh, currently, uh, there is actually a supplement specification uh, for all the specification uh, 1887. It actually, uh, it, uh, we had, it, I think the first version was in 2000. 14 October 2014. It was modified uh, several times. Uh, I would say uh, some of the modification was actually related to the results that we had in, in this project. Uh, so we had this specification uh, again uh, since 2014. Um, uh, basically, uh, GTR asphalt mixtures have a lot of benefits. Uh, one of their main, main benefits is basically reducing the environmental uh, impacts of asphalt pavement. Plus, it can help to improve the uh, performance. Uh, 
uh, of the asphalt payment. Now, despite those benefits, uh, it has not been widely implemented in Ohio. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, when we started the project, which was in 2014, we had only 36 uh, pavements or uh, pavement set sections or sections uh, where the GTR mixes had been used. And that was the first one was in 2005. Uh, so over uh, almost 10 years, there was only 36 uh, uh, sections. So uh, since 2014, again, we had more sections, but I would say it, it, maybe it didn't reach up to a 50 section uh, total. So we still um, didn't have a lot of GTR mixes being used, uh, whether on the local system or on the state routes. Uh, so this uh, project came basically to really see why uh, the GTR has not been implemented, widely implemented in Ohio. Uh, so we had uh, uh, basically the first phase focusing on that. And we wanted to see, was it a performance issue? Did the uh, GTR mixes didn't perform like a polymer mix? And basically uh, there was a problem in the long-term performance. Or was it a problem in the cost? And the, if it was a problem in the coast, why exactly that happened? And then we wanted also to see how we can help in implementing or further implementing the GTR uh, uh, in Ohio and making it more affordable, basically, to the locals. So we had to examine recent GTR technologies that have not been used in Ohio and to see if they can also help in reducing the initial cost of asphalt mixtures. We also, as part of the study, um, uh, wanted to develop a draft specification or a specification for uh, designing asphalt uh, mixtures uh, uh, that include a GTR modified asphalt binder and also develop a uh, specification for quality control and quality assurance for acceptance of uh, those GTR uh, mixtures. So this study had two phases, uh, starting with phase one. Basically, this is just, just an overview of what we did in, in phase one. Again, phase one, we it was dedicated in identifying how uh, those test sections, the 36 test section, where uh, what is uh, the performance and also the cost of those test sections, and uh, to see really if GTR asphalt uh, mixtures have good performance or not and also to see the life cycle cost analysis of those uh, mixes. Also phase uh, one, we did a lab study uh, basically uh, on new GTR uh, technologies. Uh, we evaluated different ones and we uh, 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 tried to see which ones will work and which ones won't. So, uh, the first task was collecting all information. So we collected all information uh, from those 36 uh, sections, tried to get information about the cost, information about uh, if there were any problems during construction, uh, uh, any issues after that. Um, and basically, we uh, collected the data and analyzed that. We did also, for certain sections, uh, we did in-depth analysis and evaluation. And we selected, you know, from the 36 uh, project, we selected basically four projects that you have, uh, you can see here. In uh, two of them, uh, we, uh, we selected them because uh, at those projects, there were a GTR and a polymer modified uh, sections that were constructed side by side. So this give us an, uh, it, it gave us the chance basically to do the comparison. This is actually uh, this table here uh, shows just just some information about those sections. As you can see, the sections some of those sections have been there for uh, ten years. Again, by at the time of evaluation, which was uh, done in 2015, so some of them have been there for ten years. Um, we have also sections for over then uh, seven years, and then we had also projects that were recently uh, constructed. And we tried also to look at uh, sections with uh, high uh, traffic uh, and as well as uh, low traffic, uh, truck traffic mainly. 
our feed evaluation consisted of uh, basically evaluating the uh, test sections, uh, determining basically the uh, pavement uh, conditioning rating based on uh, all the criteria. Uh, also, uh, we did coring, so we obtained the cores from those uh, different sections and uh, uh, those uh, based on that also we this is uh, showing the uh, PCR uh, the pavement conditioning rating for those uh, four sections and uh, what we can see that uh, for sections that have been there for uh, over uh, uh, than 10 years uh, the PCR was uh, relatively high and basically also we can see that the polymer modified and the GTR modified section uh, had very similar performance and also for the US 6 this is actually a state route where uh, all that had a pilot uh, study uh, so all uh, what we came you know based on our evaluation whether uh, based on the core testing or the field evaluation itself uh, we came to the conclusion that in terms of performance, all the GTR uh, sections were performing as good as a polymer modified. There was really uh, no uh, issues uh, in any of those uh, mixtures. Now, when it came to cost analysis, when we did the last cycle cost analysis and the way that we did the last cycle cost analysis that for those sections that we had, um, for 10 years, we obtained all the costs for repairs, maintenance for all those sections for both the polymer and uh, GTR modified. And uh, based on that, and uh, we tried to look into what is the uh, 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 the life cycle cost uh, uh, costs for both the polymer and the GTR modified section. So what we noticed here, uh, what you can notice here is basically the GTR was had slightly higher um, cost and uh, uh, as compared uh, to the polymer. And the main reason for that was not really repair cost, it was really the initial uh, cost. Uh, so one of the reasons why we have, and uh, you know, looking at uh, the data and talking to the uh, asphalt uh, contractors and uh, uh, city and county engineers, uh, basically, we find out that the main two reasons why we had this issue first, uh, basically, uh, there was some additional cost uh, uh, for the contractors to buy GTR binder from another supplier. Uh, a lot of uh, contractors produce their own polymer modified uh, binder at their terminal. So having it to uh, purchasing it from another supplier, uh, this have actually uh, uh, resulted in additional cost. One another thing that uh, we have uh, found was that the GTR using GTR increased the optimum asphalt binder content by about 0.2 to 0.5 percent. And uh, you know, as we will see, I would say that uh, this uh, it should be uh, going towards the 0.2, not the 0.5. But uh, you know, based on uh, uh, those test section basically it, the range was about 0.2 to 0.5 so this, this resulted in a, an increase in the price of the uh, total asphalt mixture so the findings the basic findings that uh, we had from the previous test section is that there is no issues uh, with uh, the current uh, with the GTR uh, sections uh, all of them had uh, similar performance uh, one thing that all test sections were produced with the same uh, GTR binder, the main supplier was a, a Seneca company. Uh, all, in, in all cases, we had uh, the GTR binder was designed to meet a PG76-22 a, 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 a polymer or like equivalent to a polymer modified 76-22. So based on this result, um, we decided to look into other uh, GTR technologies uh, that can help us uh, reduce the price without affecting uh, performance. 
The target was a 70 minus 22, and the reason why we selected the PG 70 minus 22 um, because most local uh, uh, local agencies, uh, when they're using a polymer modified, they typically use a polymer modified binder meeting a PG of 70 minus 22. Uh, the 76 is a little bit more expensive, and typically they do not really uh, use it. If they want to use the polymer modified, then they're targeting a 70 minus 22. So we had a multi-stage uh, procedure to do that. The first thing was we looked at the different GTR technologies. Uh, we compared the prices. And uh, basically, we selected the, one, uh, the two GTR uh, technologies that will lead the least uh, expensive. Uh, we evaluated the GTR uh, binders, uh, basically make sure uh, that they meet uh, the PG grade of a 70 minus 22. And basically, we evaluated based on that uh, the mixture uh, performance um, and I will talk about the, uh, what test we will do uh, or what test we have done in a moment. Okay, so the, this table is actually, again, phase one uh, was completed uh, in 2015. Uh, so this table, when we got the prices, uh, we got it in October of 2014. So the prices might have changed, uh, specifically your... Um, uh, when we did the cost analysis, basically, it was a, a based on a, the prices or the uh, price index for a, October of 2014. So your uh, 64 minus 22, I think at that time, was around uh, 500, 520. Um, uh, currently, it's 345, just uh, because we, we're doing some cost analysis for another study and uh, uh, like the, the one for February of 2018 is about 345. So the, what I mean by that, that those prices will change and therefore just uh, uh, the prices, all prices that were obtained was in October of 2014. And we have identified based on that analysis, and again, this is only based on raw materials. Um, we have uh, identified uh, two GTR uh, uh, materials or technologies that can be used, the Lehigh uh, GTR, and again, uh, it, it, uh, it was the Microdyne uh, 400, and then also the Liberty uh, GTR was identified to be the ones with the uh, uh, lowest price. So the next step was uh, going with uh, evaluating the uh, PG grading uh, for those binders. So we had uh, in here, as you can see, uh, we had a 64. Just uh, show that it was um, uh, the way that we had the uh, uh, GTR modified binder. We had a neat 64 minus 22. We added to it 10% of the uh, Lehigh Microdyne 400. Um, uh, and the Liberty, we did the same thing. It was also 10% uh, GTR. Uh, we had another. Uh, a binder or a third binder where we uh, added a 7% uh, Lehigh uh, GTR plus the Rio Pave, 0.5% uh, Rio Pave. Basically, the Rio Pave um, it helps in uh, reducing the uh, potential of separation of the GTR binder uh, uh, during the transportation and basically during production and transportation, I would say. Uh, so it's an anti settling uh, agent. Uh, so we have, uh, as you can see here, uh, the binder, all binders uh, uh, met, uh, met the 70 minus 22. Uh, in, in fact, it was almost, uh, it met the 76 uh, minus 22, all of them, uh, in, in uh, the binders that we have. Um, in terms of the low temperature, um, as you can see, um, uh, all of them also were colder than the minus uh, 22. Um, one thing that we noticed is that the GTR, when it comes to the GTR, uh, you need to allow the GTR to interact with the asphalt binder. Uh, so therefore, we did the evaluation uh, after 50 minutes 
so after mixing it for 50 minutes and then after putting it in the oven and basically uh, for uh, 24 hours. And the, that chemical interaction or reaction and interaction both, uh, for it to happen, I think within, it, within 24, hours is, is 24 hours is needed for that uh, chemical uh, uh, reaction and interaction to happen uh, between the, the binder and the uh, uh, GTR. And uh, you can see here with uh, some differences between the 50 minutes and uh, 24. Uh, one of the most important things was to test the stability of those uh, binders. Uh, the way to test it is the cigar tube. Uh, in the cigar tube, basically, um, uh, you uh, have the asphalt binder at a high temperature. You pour it into a cigar tube and basically uh, cool it and then you cut it in the middle and then after that you test the top and bottom parts. Uh, then you compare it. The softening point is the one used uh, at when we, when we uh, at the time of testing, all the specification allowed a 10 Fahrenheit height uh, difference uh, between uh, basically the bottom and top parts. Uh, currently, all that I think uh, uh, the current, the most current specification allows, I think, 18 uh, Fahrenheit, so it's uh, higher. But in all cases, uh, we did not really see any uh, difference in terms of separation uh, based on those uh, lab binders. We have seen that for the Liberty, which is a coarser GTR as compared to the Lehigh, uh, we have seen that there was more separation, and I think it makes sense because if you have a coarser uh, uh, particles of a material, then it will uh, settle faster. This is basically stock slope. Um, um, so the uh, the next step, once we have, uh, uh, once we made sure that the binder met the 70 minus 22, the second step was seeing the mixture. Because again, the binder can work, but when it comes to the mixture, you can see a different. Uh, result. So what we did is we looked at uh, asphalt mixtures, the gradation of asphalt mixtures uh, that is, has been used on local roadways. Uh, we have evaluated different gradations and basically what we I'm showing here, uh, those are some of the gradations that we obtained and then we were able to uh, develop a range that you can see here, a high and uh, a coarse range or a fine range and what we did is we selected a gradation that is between uh, uh, the range that we have for all asphalt mixture gradation that were obtained uh, uh, or uh, basically used in Ohio. And uh, that gradation we included uh, the aggregate that you have seen here, limestone, uh, plus very important, we used 20% trap in that asphalt mixture. And, uh, uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to use that high wrap because this is in certain cities are actually allowing up to 20% wrap um, uh, in an asphalt mixture. So we wanted to go to that uh, high end. Uh, this is the design for uh, the different uh, asphalt mixtures. So we had a control, I would say, a mixture with a polymer modified 70 minus 22. The 70 minus 22 binder was obtained from a contractor. Um, that uh, and actually it's from that have used that project on a, a, a local roadways and then those are uh, for the different mixtures we use the GTR Liberty Lehigh and Lehigh Rio Pave again with the percentages that are shown here and basically were tested with a binder. Um, Marshall mix design was used um, uh, uh, for designing those uh, asphalt mixes. Um, and this is the version asphalt binder that you can see. We have uh, differences of about a 0.1 uh, to 0.2 difference in terms of the as optimum asphalt content between a GTR modified asphalt mixture and a polymer modified. Uh, a, so we did a different tests uh, for evaluating low temperature tracking, uh, fatigue tracking. Uh, durability, um, and what I mean by durability is mainly uh, the resistance to moisture damage and rotting. Uh, so we'll, we used for the low temperature cracking the asphalt concrete 
uh, tracking device, a device that was developed as part of an, a, an audit project uh, developed by uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Sang Soo Kim. Uh, we used the indirect tensile strength. Um, it was a little bit of a modification because uh, we, it was instrumented when we did the test. Uh, the ASHTO uh, 283, and basically for the routing, we used the APA. So, uh, starting with the uh, low temperature cracking, uh, we did actually test samples that were short term aged and long term aged. And uh, the long term aged uh, was uh, uh, done uh, by, I think, ASHTO R50, which is uh, in, in this procedure uh, your asphalt mixture, once we get the sample, we put it in the oven at uh, 85 degrees Celsius for five days. And the short term basically was done by um uh, aging the asphalt mixture in the lab uh, or like the loose asphalt mixture for four hours before uh, compacting the samples um so the uh, those the results as you can see here uh for the long term aging again uh once you uh, do the aging you, your uh, low temperature cracking or uh, or will drop uh, this is what is expected. But what we have seen is that uh, the GTR, the drop in the GTR binder was less, indicating that that they might have a better low temperature cracking as compared to that polymer modified. Uh, one of the things is that in all cases, uh, the cracking temperature, which is the temperature that we expect the asphalt mixture to crack in the field or the lowest uh, temperature uh, that a, a, a uh, that an asphalt mixture will crack in the field. Basically, it was colder, uh, so it was better. So this means it is an indicator that it had a slightly better uh, a cracking or low temperature cracking resistance as compared to the uh, 70 minus 22 polymer uh, modified. Uh, here, I'm showing the indirect tensile strength. And again, we have seen an increase in the indirect tensile strength of the dry sample. Uh, uh, for the GTR, once we used a GTR a modified binder, um, uh, the highest was with the Liberty, but again, it was not much difference. Upon conditioning, uh, mainly the one, uh, wet conditioning, uh, again, the indirect tensile strength dropped, uh, uh, and it, it's almost that, that the wet condition samples had the same trend as compared to in, in, in all cases, so the, for the polymer modified as well as for the GTR modified, we had a very uh, a similar trend. And basically, we calculated the TSR, which is the tensile strength ratio, the ratio between the uh, indirect tensile strength of the wet samples as compared to the uh, dry samples. A, a minimum of 80% is recommended by most agencies, or that as well as other agencies so that's the limit that i'm putting here and in all cases i would say that all samples met uh, and all mixtures the gtr mixtures and the polymer modified had a a, a, a very similar a tsr value which was greater than uh, the 0.8 uh, uh, rutting uh, that all that requires for a, a medium uh, or a roadways for a media with medium traffic uh, which is the you know which is the mix that uh, which which is the type of roadway that we're designing for it for local uh, it requires a maximum of five millimeter uh, after 20,000 uh, uh, cycles uh, basically in the APA and um, uh, therefore, um, uh, all of them have met, all asphalt mixtures have met that uh, criteria, but the GTR, as you can see here, uh, we had a significant reduction in uh, rutting, which means that the GTR uh, asphalt mixtures have actually a better uh, rutting resistance uh, than the polymer modified as indicated by the results of the APA. So to, to summarize, you know, phase one uh, findings, uh, uh, basically the lab study mainly, uh, we have found that uh, the GTR uh, or mixes uh, prepared with the GTR binders, all three GTR binders, 
basically, uh, they had a, a slightly better uh, resistance to low temperature uh, as well as fatigue cracking resistance as compared to a polymer modified binder meeting uh, the 70 minus 22. Uh, in terms of rutting, uh, the GTR mixes had a better uh, rutting resistance as compared to a, a polymer modified a, a binder meeting 70 minus 22. Um, in terms of uh, basically the ASH 283 results, um, uh, the GTR uh, mixes had slightly higher indirect inside strength, um, and also it had a similar uh, TFR values indicating that it has a similar uh, resistance to a moisture uh, damage as compared, of course, to a polymer modified 70 minus 22 uh, binder. And again, all comparison that is done, it's com it is basically compared to that uh, polymer modified 70 minus 22 binder that uh, we obtained in this study. So based on that, uh, we wanted to go basically to the second phase. So, you know, uh, doing everything in the lab is something, but the most important is how will those mixes uh, perform in the field. So in phase two, uh, and this is an overview of what we have done in phase two, the main thing is was construction of test sections in two cities, the city of Akron and city of uh, Columbus, and basically doing a preliminary evaluation uh, of the performance. So I will start with the city of Columbus uh, test sections. Um, uh, the, uh, we had uh, four test sections that you can see here. Uh, one where we had a control uh, section uh, where we used a polymer modified or a mixture with a polymer modified uh, asphalt binder meeting PG70-22. In the others, we used a GTR, a, a mixtures with a GTR binder uh, with Liberty. We had also a, a GTR binder with a Microdyne 400, which is the Lehigh, and also another one where we used uh, the uh, Lehigh uh, GTR as well as a Rio Pay. Uh, construction was done in uh, uh, August of 2016. Uh, we had uh, allocated one day for each uh, of the GTR test sections. And uh, the test sections are actually uh, close uh, to here. Uh, those are on Kenny Roads, uh, uh, close to OSU. Uh, you have, I guess, uh, if you're from Columbus area, then basically you have driven uh, over those, uh, over that roadway several times, not noticing that uh, you had it driven on a GTR asphalt mixer. So the roadway is exactly, the test sections are uh, between, uh, on Kenny Road between Ackerman and Lane. Um, and basically this is a, just a schematic showing uh, uh, what the test sections are. Uh, So the uh, construction uh, of the test section, uh, all GTR mixes were actually uh, constructed in the same exact way as a polymer modified, the uh, same equipment, everything was the same. Uh, even the rolling pattern, uh, it was the same. So we monitored uh, compaction temperature density. Uh, density in this case, uh, or for this project, was obtained using the PQI. Uh, 380, it's a non-nuclear uh, density gauge. And uh, this is actually showing the relative density. So there was no problem uh, in achieving the uh, target uh, relative density. Um, one thing that I would like to notice here is that, uh, in general, uh, a, the relative uh, compaction or relative density for the GTR was uh, slightly higher than the polymer. And one of the reasons why we had it, I would say, that the GTR uh, mixes were produced at a higher temperature. The contractor wanted to make sure that the target density is achieved, so he increased the uh, temperature of the GTR mixes. But again, uh, there was no need for that uh, 
actually. So we, what we have done there is uh, uh, measure the density and basically at each spot where we measure the density, we also obtained cores. Uh, we had six inch cores. We also took samples of the binder at uh, different cases uh, through the production. So we got samples at the asphalt terminal. Um, and then we got also samples at the production. So we got it from the production line just to see if there is any separation that is happening uh, during that process. Uh, we did a DSR uh, for the high temperature uh, grade and also BBR, bending beam barometer, and the ABCD. For those of you who are not familiar with the ABCD, ABCD is the asphalt binder cracking device. Again, it's developed by my, uh, my colleague. Um, as part of a, a national study, it's actually an ASHTO approved uh, test. Um, so we did on the cores, again, those are six inch cores, we did uh, evaluate the low temperature cracking. Um, uh, we did a, a fatigue cracking at that time. Uh, there was a new test uh, procedure that had been adopted by uh, some DOTs, including Illinois, which is the semi-circular uh, beam test, the SCB. So therefore, we use that uh, to evaluate the fatigue cracking. And then basically, we also evaluated the durability using the ASH-283. Uh, uh, in terms of high temperature, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, all binders, uh, met uh, the 70 minus uh, 22, uh, which is the target, or the 70, I mean, uh, high temperature grade. Um, this is actually, this figure is showing the G star over sine delta, which is uh, basically, it is used uh, as the criteria to determine uh, your high temperature um, grade. And again, the criteria is, a, the G star over sine delta should be a one. That's the criteria that you have here. And uh, what I'm showing here is uh, uh, for the uh, two cases, uh, case A, which is uh, basically samples that were uh, of GTR binder obtained uh, after mixing. And then for case E, where basically sample, uh, binder samples obtained from the production line. And we did in here, uh, the testing on those samples just to see if there is any separation. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are uh, some separation, but it is insignificant. And the most important thing that in, in all cases, it was the value was the G star over sine delta was high. Now, in here, for the Liberty, which again, the lab study, we have noticed that again, the coarser particles of Liberty. Um, of the GTR, in, in, in the case of the uh, Liberty GTR, might have um, uh, increased the tendency of uh, GTR particles to separate. So this is one of the things that we have uh, noticed here. Now, in terms of uh, testing, uh, I'm showing both uh, BBR and ABCD. Um, again, in all cases, uh, we have uh, it met uh, the minus 22 uh, criteria. Very important thing is that the BBR has a problem in testing uh, uh, asphalt binders or uh, modified asphalt binders, uh, 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 whether it is polymer or GTR, whenever your uh, modifier has a percentage of more than 4%. This is actually some of the issues with the BBR. Uh, so uh, if, you're a mod if you're evaluating a, a highly modified asphalt binder, you might also have um, some issues. So therefore, in here, that is what we noticed, is that there is differences between the ABCD PG grading and the BBR when it comes specifically when, when it comes to a highly uh, modified uh, a binder. So, for example, for a 70 minus 22, you can see that the results were very similar. For the GTR, there was differences. And again, because the, the percentage of the modifier here is significant, that uh, your BBR, again, 
I would say boundary condition as well as uh, other things uh, with the test itself, um, uh, it might have a problem in evaluating the low temperature of uh, that modified binder. So going to the uh, mixes uh, uh, results, so the ITS. Um, the ITS for all mixes uh, were, were greater than 100, um, as you can see, uh, in all cases. Um, in, in all cases, what we have noticed is that the, a, uh, the GTR mixes in general, they had a very similar values, whether it is the dry or the wet, as compared to a, a, the polymer modified. Um, the drop, again, with the 70 was higher as compared to the others, uh, which is, again, something that we have seen in the uh, lab. Um, so TSR for all uh, mixes, whether it is uh, the polymer modified or GTR, and again, this is those tests are on four samples obtained after construction of the test sections. Um, uh, we have seen that, again, the TSR values, uh, which is an indicator of the resistance, uh, to moisture damage. In all cases, uh, we can see that it, uh, uh, it was higher than 0.8. It was acceptable, and uh, it was similar to the uh, polymer uh, modified. The SCB, uh, the normalized fracture energy, uh, which is an indicator of the fatigue cracking resistance, we have seen a drop uh, uh, based on the SCB uh, in the GTR uh, mixes as compared to the polymer modified. Uh, but one thing that I would also like to notice is that also in certain cases uh, the variation was high that uh, statistically that difference is insignificant and uh, this is also another parameter which is the flexibility index it tells you more about the ductility of the of the mixture or how it can tolerate um, uh, stresses uh, after is a material cracks. Um, for uh, low temperature, um, again, all of them were uh, colder than the minus 22, which is the most important. Uh, but again, we see a slight reduction, but from a statistical point of view, they were uh, very similar in terms of um, the low temperature cracking. Now, those pictures were taken eight months, uh, but uh, just passing through that roadway uh, just about a, a less than a month ago, uh, it's the same thing. There is really no issue so far. So after about, I would say, a year and a half, uh, there were no issues in terms of any crackings or uh, uh, potential crackings in terms of, the, of that. Uh, at the time when we did a full evaluation, the PCR value was uh, technically 800 because there was really no crack uh, or any type of these stresses. Um, uh, and uh, for all sections so far, uh, there is no, uh, there are no problems. Akron test section. So for Akron, uh, the test site was on State Route 59. Uh, it's, a, it's a state route and it has heavier traffic. Just to, um, uh, this is actually a project uh, uh, that was done in uh, just a few months ago. It was done actually in October of 2017. In um, here, uh, we had a, a the test section was about a, about a mile uh, or a little less than a mile. We had two sections. Uh, just show the picture. This is actually a map for uh, where the test sections. So the control was actually in the westbound, and then basically uh, the GTR where we used a Lehigh GTR with the Rio Pave was on the eastbound, and this is uh, basically. Um, that uh, where the two sections exact uh, location for the uh, two sections. Uh, in terms of construction, 
There was no issues related to the GTR. We had some uh, uh, problems in the construction at the beginning of the construction, really, because uh, that the asphalt uh, or the asphalt mixture was a, a little bit tender, so the compaction was a little bit difficult at the beginning of the project. Uh, but then the contractor adjusted uh, the asphalt binder content. Again, in all cases, the asphalt binder was within the specification. Uh, this has solved um, uh, the problem. Uh, but again, as we will look at the compaction, it was, there was no problem with the compaction, but achieving the compaction, they had to uh, roll it uh, several times. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, issues with the construction, we did not see anything. One thing that I would like to mention here is that the temperature was, it was in October in Akron, uh, it was around in the, I would say, 60s uh, to 70s, so where there was no problem with constructing GTR section at that uh, temperature, which is, again, a good thing because, uh, uh, you know, before that we had, uh, you know, the contractors were afraid or hesitant basically to do anything uh, after September with the GTR, but again, with mid October, we did not really have uh, any issue. Again, uh, the relative compaction, uh, uh, again, we had four lanes, uh, two lanes in each direction. So we had curb lane and uh, two lane, and in both cases, in general, uh, based on both uh, the testing uh, with coring as well as the testing with the uh, nuclear density gauge, in both cases, we had relative compaction uh, of the uh, GTR uh, higher than the polymer uh, modified. Again, it, it was a slight uh, difference, but uh, again, so there was no problem in the compaction. So we obtained, again, the same, uh, the same way that we have done with the Columbus test section, we obtained the binder at the terminal as well as uh, from uh, the production line at the asphalt plant. And then in here, we had actually uh, uh, several uh, cores, we obtained uh, four inch and six inch uh, samples were obtained along the uh, sections. And we did uh, the same test that we have done before for uh, the Columbus uh, core samples, ACCD for low temperature cracking, SCB for the fatigue cracking, and then for moisture uh, susceptibility, we used the ASH to 283. Uh, high temperature grade, uh, in both cases, it met the uh, 70 uh, degrees in both cases. Uh, it was uh, relatively, the GTR uh, had slightly higher, but not much. Now for uh, the low temperature, uh, the GTR actually barely, uh, I would say, uh, failed uh, the, minus, uh, the minus 22. Uh, in this case, actually, it was 21.5. Some samples of the binder actually met uh, in, in the BBR. Now, in terms of when we did the ABCD testing, it actually uh, met the criteria, and it was actually a minus, a, almost a minus 26 uh, or higher. Uh, again, uh, I think that uh, BBR has some issues uh, when it comes to highly modified uh, binder, uh, but in all cases, you know, the, the uh, results, the GTR in terms of the BBR was uh, lower or uh, warmer, I would say, than the minus 22 in terms of the BBR. In terms of the ABCD, it actually was uh, uh, higher or uh, better. For core samples, uh, indirect inside strength uh, for both dry and wet, uh, uh, there was really um, no difference uh, 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 between uh, the GTR and the polymer modified. Uh, for the TSR uh, values, again, they were higher than 0.8 for both cases, the polymer and the GTR, and they were very, very similar. Uh, SCB test, which is was different than the Columbus in here. Actually, they were uh, much similar. The GTR was slightly lower, but again, uh, uh, 
statistically, uh, it was not that in terms of uh, normalized fracture energy. In terms of the flexibility index, actually, it was uh, the same as the polymer modified 70 uh, minus 22. Um, what is interesting now, the cracking temperature for the, uh, the GTR mix was actually colder, slightly colder, as compared to the 70 minus 22. Uh, not much, but uh, there is uh, about half a degree difference. So it's, an, again, an indication that there might not be uh, differences in terms of the cracking temperature between both. So the latest evaluation was done last Friday. Uh, uh, so we got those uh, in the rain, uh, uh, got those pictures. Again, we did not really, based on that evaluation, we uh, uh, we did not really see any difference. We did a, a, an in-depth evaluation uh, uh, back in uh, end of December, and basically there was uh, no uh, differences in terms of performance. Both sections had a good performance with no issues uh, reported uh, so far. Um, so to summarize, uh, basically, uh, uh, so far there is no problems in terms of performance. Uh, for the two sections, we did not really observe any of these levels, uh, uh after, I would say, a year and a half of service of the GTR mixture. Uh, they had uh, very similar to a polymer modified. Uh, the lab testing is uh, indicating that also they have a similar performance uh, or uh, low temperature cracking and fatigue cracking uh, uh, resistance as compared to a polymer modified. Uh, we have seen that it has, uh, in certain cases, it has actually better performance in terms or better resistance to moisture damage. But again, the differences are uh, really small that we cannot uh, uh, see and say that it is statistically uh, significant. Now, in terms of the cost, uh, the initial cost of the GTR mixer was higher because it was a pilot study. Uh, but based on uh, the analysis that we have uh, done, we are seeing that there is a potential that uh, uh, as, uh, the GTR asphalt mixtures, if they are widely used uh, in Ohio, they will be uh, less expensive than the uh, SPS uh, polymer uh, modified uh, binders. Um, our recommendation, uh, the first recommendation is that we have done performance evaluation for, I would say, a year and a half of service. This is uh, basically preliminary um, findings, and uh, basically this is, uh, does not cover the long-term performance of those uh, mixtures and sections. So therefore, we are recommending that those uh, uh, sections should be evaluated. We provided in, in our report a plan to do the long-term uh, evaluation of those uh, test sections. Um, and basically, uh, based on that evaluation and based on the cost analysis, uh, then we can really uh, determine whether the GTR uh, asphalt mixtures are cost effective uh, or not. But again, based on the preliminary findings, we can see that um, there is no issues and we think that uh, they can be used. Uh, we have developed a mixed design uh, specification um, for GTR mixes to be used by local public agencies. So local public agencies that want to use uh, the GTR mixes, we recommend that they check those specifications uh, uh, when uh, basically trying to use such mixes. Um, and again, if the GTR uh, mixes uh, are used, are widely used, then uh, we can see that they have a lot of benefits and they can be more uh, uh, cost effective as compared to the conventional uh, polymer uh, modified mixes. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you for uh, uh, listening uh, for all that time.
and uh, hopefully our payment will be as smooth as this roadway. Uh, thank you uh, for your attention, and if you have any uh, questions, uh, please let me know.